All right, this morning we're going to learn how to script jobs from one SQL server, not in another server in PowerShell. And uh, let's, let's kind of give an example of how this would work. Let's suppose, and in this example, we're going to use QA. We have a QA server, and we have a production server. And what we want to do is we want to look at our production server and see what jobs exist in our production server and compare them to the jobs that are in QA. And if a job exists in QA that does not exist in production, we want to script out, script out that job. Uh, another step would be we want to remove that job. Why? Because QA should match production. So to give you just a brief uh, relatable story, I'm in a, an environment right now in which we have over 300 or more servers, who knows how many databases when it's all said and done. and our production, our QA, our dev, and our pre-production, as they call it, do not match at all. And this ends up creating tons of confusion. Not only does it create tons of confusion, it shows what happens if you don't design something right the first time. You end up spending, in this past year, they probably spent anywhere from two to 5,000 hours maintaining an environment not because they needed to, but because they, they don't really know what's running in prod versus QA versus pre-prod versus prod I'm, versus dev, I'm sorry. So, if you really want to know the, the cost of not maintaining things right to begin with, you're looking at a thousand to, or a thousand to five thousand hours. And keep in mind that, you know, they're developers, they're DBAs. Um, if you think about, let's just suppose each one of them get paid, you know, seventy to eighty thousand a year, you multiply all of those hours out times that and you start to realize they're spending millions of dollars just on maintenance that they could easily get rid of. So when companies complain about spending money, it's like, mm, well, you don't really need developers to do all that. Okay, so in this instance, what we have is we have a string here that's QA, an object, I'm sorry, that's QA. We have our QA server and instance. We have our production object, production server and instance, and then we have our file. And this is basically just a path. Now. I do not have multiple servers on this computer, so I cannot uh, test this in front of the people watching this video. However, I did have used this numerous times since I've been at my current position, so it does work. Uh, I just copy and paste this, and the only things I do is uh, change this. And by the way, you can change this to dev if you just absolutely have to. So we're just going to go over this. I'm not going to spend time typing it out. So we're just going to go over this pretty fast. That way you guys will have a script now that if you're in the same situation that I'm in, will be very useful. First thing we're going to do, we're going to clean uh, the strings because later we're going to pass it into it, which this is just a regex pattern. What it does is it pulls, pulls out all the special characters of the string that's passed in. That's all this does. So you can um, you can take a string, for instance, and um, that has, let's say, star and the and symbol and the percent sign, and it will return that same string without all those special characters. Okay, and then the next thing we're going to do, and I think we've done this in a previous video, is we're, we're going to load the, the SMO library. And then we're going to use it twice. We're going to declare that new object. And you'll notice here's our production server, P and then Q. And then here's our QA server. And we've already declared what those servers are up here. So we don't have to, to put them there. If you wanted to, you could type out the servers right here. Okay, and then we're going to look at the the production server, the job server dot jobs, and we're going to look at the QA server, job server dot jobs. Now this is where it gets kind of a little bit interesting and you have to pay very close attention because you can make some big mistakes here. First of all, copy it is production. You want to make sure not to get these confused. Clean it is what you're trying to clean up. So you want to clean up your QA, you want to clean up your dev, you want to clean up your pre-production to match production. You do not want to flip these around. Okay, You want to make sure that Production is what you're copying, not QA. Otherwise, you'll end up wiping things out in production, and that's a big no-no. And you'll notice, too, because if you look at, in general, and unfortunately, I have SQL Express on this machine, so I cannot do this, but if you look at, for instance, job server dot jobs, you'll know that if you were to go through each job, I mean, it's going to have who knows how much information about it. So what we're doing is we're basically selecting out a specific property, the name. That's why we're doing this here out of all that. And again, you I would suggest, you know, practicing it by going through this and you'll see what I mean. You're like, whoa, there's you know, you're talking about is enabled, um, the last run date, I believe there's the create date. There's all kinds of properties that you could look at on 
under this right here. So we're just selecting out the name because we want to compare it. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to have an array where we're going to compare, copy it to clean it. And we're and you'll notice there's there's the not equals here. And that's because again, what jobs are in production? We're looking at the jobs in production and the jobs in QA. So what jobs are in QA that are not in production? And we want to find out what those are. So now we're going to go to our you know, QA server here. And again, you do not want this to be P. And we're going to say, hey, for each job in the QA server job.jobs, if the array that we have set up here is like the job name on the server right here. So if the array is like the job name, what we're going to do is we're going to declare the, the J name object, which is going to get the name of the job. Then we're going to, and you'll see our function here, we're going to clean the name. And this is because I don't know why companies do this, but every single company I've worked at always has some job with all these special characters in it. And those special characters, for the record, do not add anything of value to the job name. And it's a really bad idea to do anyway, because if you were trying to script a job in T-SQL, you it would be a headache with all these special characters. So just a note, never ever create a job with special characters. Don't do it. There's, you can do it with letters. You don't have to use special characters. So we clean the job name. Then we declare the file, which we're getting our file from above. We're getting the name from above, and we're doing .sql. And as most of you know, if, if we included this in all of this clean strings, it would remove that period. So that's why we're adding that at the end. Then we're writing the host job file, so we're getting the full name just to verify and we are scripting the job and we are scripting it to this location right here and like i said it works beautifully it will um, script all of those jobs that are in qa that are not in production or that are in dev that are not in production that are in pre-prod but are not in production it's wonderful um you'll notice i have coded out here too j.draw so this will remove the job as well. You script it and remove it. So one quick note here, never, ever, 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 ever remove anything unless you've scripted it first. And you know, just say, well, I, I removed the jobs because I didn't need it. And what happens if they come back and they say, oh, it turns out we actually need that job. That was something that we were currently developing. Um, you have a script. It's like, oh, okay, here, here's a script. If you don't, then you just removed something and you kind of look careless. So that's a note, something that um, you can learn from experience, but I'm just suggesting always script everything that you remove. If you want to remove a table, script it out first, then remove the table. That way you also have a receipt. And um, if a database administrator, especially when it comes to data, like any type of transaction that you do, anything that has a receipt to it, a database administrator can go and dig through and solve really fast. If you don't have a receipt, takes them a lot more time, and then they don't like you. So then we have j.drop. So we could technically, if we wanted, we could actually drop the job. What I like to do here um, in working with departments that have, or I'm sorry, companies that have a lot of different departments, is I will script out all the jobs, then I will get the name, I will go and I will have a meeting with those other people, so QA or dev or pre-prod, and I will say, hey, I'll say to these teams, these are the jobs that I found that are not running in production that are. Are you currently working on these jobs? And if they say, oh, no, we haven't done work, we were trying to test out this, yada, 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 then I will go ahead and I will drop the jobs. I can then code this out. I don't need to script it anymore and just drop the job. Uh, but I always talk with those teams beforehand uh, because, again, if you have it on file, if you have it on record, that you had a meeting, you can prove it on your calendar, you name it, um, then, of course, you have evidence that you weren't just being careless and capricious and randomly dropping jobs. I would not, however, say, oh, okay, I've had it all scripted out. Okay, now I'm just going to remove them all. Again, I would, I would meet with those teams beforehand. So, uh, of course, this code is on GitHub. It's under uh, my GitHub, uh, TMMT Smith, PowerShell, Environments, One versus One Script Jobs. And um, again, I would be very careful. PowerShell's really useful. It's very powerful. It's a beautiful language. Um, but on the flip side, it has a downside, and that is you can do a lot of damage if you don't mean to do a lot of damage. And then, of course, one final point, if you're a company and you're watching this video, this is a, a perfect example of something that kind of encourages you to design it right the first time. Um, because, again, if, 
if you have a lot of this which is automated, so for instance, if you have in QA or in dev, my, my viewpoint is QA should never have anything that production should not have unless it's about to be something that's rolled out into production. Um, but we're in a situation right now where we had, I think in one of our environments, probably about 700 or 800 jobs that were not in production and were never going to be in production. And you can imagine the headache that that would be if this was manual. This is luckily automated. So doing it right the first time, having a system in place that can remove old stuff that's not used is very useful in the long run to preventing um, just a lot more work. Because when you think about a thousand to just five thousand hours in that range, and yes, it's a pretty broad range, and you say, let's, you know, you're paying each employee maybe forty dollars an hour, fifty dollars or sixty dollars an hour, um, you're you're getting you're getting in the very high expensive range just to manage an environment, which would be much simpler to um, to have designed right in the first place. So it saves a lot of money and it also saves a lot of headache in the long run.